Cinders and Ashes is a multi-book gay male retelling of Cinderella set in a high fantasy world. Just like Cursed, which is my three-book gay romance retelling of Beauty and the Beast, I'm elaborating on this tale to make it an entire romantic series, so there will be a lot of added material. So I've gotten a lot of questions about Cinders and Ashes, and I'm going to answer some of them here. So if you're curious, continue on. What's different between my retelling of Cinderella and the main story? So, so much. But one of the main things that I always had a problem with the more classic tale is why does Cinderella stay when she's treated so badly? I think in the past, it made sense that an unmarried woman would have very few opportunities. But as a man, instead of an unmarried girl, shouldn't he just be able to leave the place and go make his fortune elsewhere? And that is one of the main objections to making this turnover without Finn looking, quite frankly, like, why aren't you just leaving? And actually, one of the characters does suggest that in the book. So I have a rather unique answer to that, which is fey and magic. Finn's nature as a half-blood fey, he looks human on the outside, but he has fey magic, and he has a very interesting backstory, as we'll find out, is the threat that the stepfather and stepbrothers hold over him. Basically, if he leaves, if he doesn't work as a servant on the estate, they will go to King Rohan, and reveal his identity, and all Fae are killed on sight. Now, whether that's a real threat they'd go through with is an interesting question. Another question I get, how did I make it work as a gay romance? Because the original is a rags-to-riches tale about a girl being rewarded for being kind, good, and obedient to family. And some fairy tales really don't work um, with a gay retelling. I made it more about there's this threat that if he doesn't help them, he will be killed and that there's nowhere he can go where they can't basically find him and that his life is in true danger from them. So he also loves the estate. It's it's his mother's home and the last thing he has of her. And like in the Ever After adaptation with Drew Barrymore, I really found the deep love between the daughter and the father and that very compelling and also her desire to save the estate and do good for the other servants. And I think Finn feels that too, if he's not there to quicken the life in the estate, it's not just his evil step family who will suffer, but the people he loves who work on the estate. I've been asked, are there sexy parts in the first book? Why, yes, there are. I have a rule of thumb that I try to have at least one sexual, very romantic scene in a book, even if the partners aren't together yet, whether that be through a dream or something like that. But in this case, it is not a dream. It is real because I feel that um, isn't that part of the fun of romance books? Like, come on, we got to have some sexy times in there. But of course, I never put it in the story in a way that um, makes it unbelievable or interrupts the flow or anything like that. I love porn without plot too, guys, but that's not what these books are. So another uh, question was, what parts of the Cinderella tale will I be staying particularly faithful to? I think that there will definitely be aspects of the revenge fantasy. I think Ever After did that very well with Drew Barrymore at the end, basically saying to the two evil ones, like, I'll never think of you again while you will think of me every day. I think that definitely will be part and good will win over evil. I think that's really sort of a compelling part of that story. And also the rags to riches aspect. There might be more to that than meets the eye in my tale. Will there be classic Cinderella markers, such as the fairy godmother, a ball scene, a shoe left behind? There will be a huge ball scene. There will actually be a lot of that. The fairy godmother figure, um, I have an idea for who that might be. It will not be a little person with wings, but it will be that same idea. Somebody who will help Finn be able to attend that ball. Will there be a shoe left behind? No, not a literal shoe, but maybe a figurative shoe. Who would really fit the best as um, King Rohan's match? 
Will you take things from more versions than just the Disney one that everyone knows? For example, when the stepsisters are trying on the shoe, they cut off a piece of their foot in the original story to make it fit. Because when they're queen, they won't have to walk. Is that not gruesome? And it leaves a trail of blood, which is how the prince knows she's not the one. Another example is that Cinderella's mother's spirit is hanging around a tree, which she prays to, and the birds give her the dresses. This takes place, the place of the godmother in the original story. Um, The birds also pick out the stepsister's eyes at the end. Hmm. I definitely am taking more than just the um, more standardized Disney version. I will be going back into the old version. The tree, as you'll find out, there's already mention of a tree. And also, there's some gruesome parts. There's some, there's the Fae are not known for their, um, how shall I say, their forgiveness. Let's put it that way. So that's going to be interesting. And I'm also very inspired by Ever After, which I thought was one of the best adaptations of Cinderella. The next question is sort of connected. Or will you just make up your own lore because the Fae and magic makes everything so different already? And it is very different. It is a high fantasy tale with, um, it's sort of with dark magic and just some really interesting world building. I hope that you find it interesting in any case. So I'm going to do a huge mixture, but you'll find touchstones that I think that you'll really enjoy. But this story is definitely not a beat for beat retelling. Obviously not. Um, You'll find that after you just read the first chapter. Another question is, you talk about Ever After, how that presented an alternative story while still staying pretty faithful to the original. In a way it did. I think it updated it. It too was dealing with the fact that um, in the original Cinderella, there really wasn't that explanation of why she stayed. And if you update it with our sensibilities to a certain amount, it's really hard to relate to Cinderella in a lot of ways because she simply is just almost too good for this world. And I think Drew Barrymore, you understood why she was staying there, to save the estate, and you, and then she ended up saving herself after the prince acted terribly. I and mean, I really found that that was so rewarding, and that made her such a strong character, an interesting character, and so wholly likable. Um, I love that. How many books will it be? I have estimated five books. Um, while there's always a chance it could be less, it would be no less than three, but five seems to be it. The fifth book might become really long, um, but I'm only giving myself three months in between books to write them right now. We'll see how that goes. When do I plan to release the next book, book two? I'm setting up pre-orders every three months ahead. I have the Wraith Rain site while I am, I'm, I'm like the equivalent of writing more than a book every month for members amongst all the serials. So this is done on quote unquote days. I am not writing chapters for the site and doing other work for the site. Am I going to be doing any other fairy tale retellings? I actually am. I'm actually going to be doing Hansel and Gretel, but I'm going to be doing it as Brother Cest. Oh, yes, I know. So for those of you, though, who have a taste for that, um, obviously that can never go up on Amazon. It's going to be a serial on the site only. So that might be um, something to sign up for. And that's probably going to come after Dragon's Reign ends. Those of you listening to the podcast, there's tons more to go. There's over 100 chapters on the set already of Dragon's Reign. Uh, We still have a ways to go, but that Hansel and Gretel, and I have no idea if it's going to be like Hansel and Hansel or something like that, will be um, the next fairy tale retelling that I'm going to do far in the future, but it will be coming. So those are the questions that I've gotten so far, and I hope that your question was answered here. If not, please feel free to leave a comment down below, and we will get back to you on that. Thank you so much again for listening to Dragon's Reign and being part of the Wraith Reign family. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.